What's up guys? Welcome back to Chiefs Chat. Today we're doing the Chiefs versus Bengals game recap. Um, you know, it's tough to say. It's, uh, it's unfortunate to have to uh, report. Obviously you guys know at this point, but uh, it's unfortunate to have to talk about the fact that we did not win this game. You know, uh, week 17, going against a solid team, Cincinnati Bengals, uh, you know, couldn't pull it out, you know, uh, couldn't get the win at the end of the game. Uh, there's a lot to talk about here in this episode. This might be a longer episode. I mean, I don't know yet, but uh, there's a lot to unpack. Um, but first and foremost, you know, it's, uh, it's important to talk about the AFC playoff picture at this point in time. In week 18, the only way that the Chiefs will be able to get the number one seed is if the Titans lose to the Texans. Now, it's unlikely, okay? We all know that. Uh, the Texans, they're not a very good football team. Going against the Titans, who, you know, I wouldn't say are the best team, but, you know, they're a solid group. You know, definitely a playoff team. Uh, so it, it's going to be tough. You know, it's not going to be, uh, you know, a, a, a pleasant game to have to sit and watch. You know, uh, I, I don't want to have to put my trust in Davis Mills and this uh, Texans football team, but that's where we're at, okay? That is the position that we've put ourselves in after this loss to the Bengals, you know? It's a tough pill to swallow, but that's where we're at right now. Uh, you know, everyone knows how vitally important uh, the number one seed is uh, when it comes to uh, the playoffs, you know? Don't have to play that wild card game. You know, you can rest your starters, get, get healthy, uh, you know, uh, get some good Get some good rest before, uh, you know, the uh, the winner go home games really do start. Um, and on top of that, you know, you only got to play two games. You only got to win two football games before you're going to the Super Bowl. Um, every other team, every other wild card team, uh, you know, we've got to play three. That's just the way it is in the NFL. So, you know, uh, that number one seed is very important. And as of right now, it's looking like it's going to the Titans, you know. It's looking like... For the first time in two years, the Chiefs are not going to have the number one seed in the AFC. You know, it's unfortunate. Uh, but hey, there's still a chance, you know? The Texans might do it. Uh, I'm definitely going to be a Texans fan this week, uh, as I know everybody else will in Chiefs Kingdom. Uh, let's go Davis Mills, you know? This kind of reminds me of what happened a couple of years ago uh, with Ryan Fitzpatrick, you know? Uh, you know, trying to get that win against New England so the Chiefs could sneak into the number two seed. You know, that's kind of how this feels. We need another miracle, man. We need another miracle. You know, who knows if it's going to happen. I really do hope it does. But uh, that is the position that we're in right now after this loss to the Bengals. Now let's talk about the game itself, okay? You know, I know everyone can, can sit here and, and talk about the fact that, you know, the officiating wasn't too good, you know? A, lo a lot of missed calls, and I would say a lot of missed calls on both sides, but I do think as a Chiefs fan, and, you know, as a fan in general who was uh, witnessing this game, a lot of the calls seemed to favor the Bengals, you know? Uh, it was unfortunate. It was tough. Um, especially in that final drive. We had him stopped, you know? Fourth and goal, we had him stopped. But the penalty flags, they killed us. They killed us. I mean, we had the game. We had the game, had the fourth down stop, you know. Chiefs would have got the ball back uh, with less than a couple of minutes left on the clock. But nevertheless, we would have had the ball. You know, we had a chance to get down the football field and put up some points, you know. Or, uh, you know, worst case scenario, uh, the game is tied and we go into overtime, you know. It's just unfortunate the way things panned out. Uh, in that last six minutes of football. You know, you give the you give the Bengals the ball back, okay? They've got one timeout. The Chiefs have three timeouts. Uh, you know, in this situation, you expect the Chiefs to be able to get the ball back. But that wasn't the case, okay? They took it all the way down to zero and scored the game-winning field goal, you know? Not good clock management, you know? Uh, Andy Reid is a, uh, sorry, is a head coach who has never been known for being able to manage the clock. You know, it's, it's been unfortunate, but that's kind of the weakness of his game. Um, and that really showed on Sunday. Um, it was tough, it was tough to watch. Uh, and obviously you hope for better. Uh, you know, Andy Reid has been a head coach in the NFL for a long time, 
Uh, but here's what a lot of fans, you know, I think a lot of Chiefs fans are looking at that game and talking about how, oh, we should have just let them score the touchdown, you know? We should have just let them score so we could get the ball back and try to tie the game, okay? But here's the thing about that, you know, what are you supposed to do as a defensive coordinator? You're supposed to sit there and tell your players to let them score a touchdown. You know, that that's telling them, you know, that's straight up saying, hey, I don't have any faith in you guys. Uh, I do not have any faith, uh, you know, I, I don't have absolutely, you know, there's no chance that you guys are going to be able to make this stop. So I want you to let them score a touchdown. That's not the way that you're supposed to coach a team. That's not the way that the defensive coordinator is supposed to, you know, manage his defense. That's just not right. That's not the way things are supposed to go. And I think a lot of fans are missing that point, you know. Uh, you know, what, what, what do these fans want... You know, what, what, what do they expect to happen? You know, I, I don't think I've ever, you know, thought of a, a point in time in NFL history in which a defensive coordinator has told their defense to not even try. You know, uh, it, it's tough. It's a tough situation, but we did what we had to do. So, you know, clock management, you could say that Andy Reid did struggle in that department, but at the same time, we can't just let them score. You know, we can't just let them score a touchdown. That's never going to be, you know, that's never going to be the case. We're never just going to open a, open a wide open hole and let them run right in. That, that's never going to be what the focus is. Because in our mind, we can make that stop. And did you guys see what happened? I mean, first down, second down, third down. They couldn't do anything. They could not get a yard against our defense. And that, that really does show a lot of character. It shows a lot of heart. It shows that we're still in this thing. You know what? We're still trying to stop this offense. It's just the penalty flags on fourth down that killed this team. Just absolutely killed this team, you know. Uh, in the first half of the game, it was looking like the Chiefs, uh, you know, it was looking like another Raiders game, you know. I mean, we were just scoring left and right. The defense was playing well, uh, you know, not as good as, uh, you know, against the Raiders. But they were playing all right. You know, they were trying to, you know, somewhat manage Joe Burrow in that offense. Uh, but, you know, they did put up 17 points. And then in the second half, things just kind of seemed to stall, you know. A lot of people talk about, oh man, that was a horrible second half by the Chiefs. Uh, the offense couldn't do anything. The defense was, you know, letting everything go over their heads. And that is true. That is exactly what happened. But let me explain what happened on the offensive side of the ball. You know, we did only put up three points in that, uh, in that second half. Uh, but you, what exactly happened was, you know, this Bengals offense, they were just keeping the ball away, away from Patrick Mahomes. You know, when Patrick Mahomes doesn't have the ball, the Chiefs aren't going to score a lot of points. That's just how it's going to work. You know, that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, you know, if you take a look at the tape, if you take a look at the highlights on every single Chiefs game uh, in which we've lost so far this season, um, you know, the time of possession is, uh, you know, heavily in the favor of the other team. You know, when Patrick Mahomes doesn't have the ball, we lose football games. And that's exactly what happened in the second half. Patrick Mahomes wasn't having the ball. You know, he just, he wasn't holding onto the ball enough, you know, uh, and, and, and the defense couldn't get themselves off the field. You know, it, it was tough. And that's really the main focus of this game, you know. Late game clock management and also the defense, okay. It was absolutely atrocious, okay. The secondary was absolutely atrocious. I think I think we can all agree. The secondary was the worst part of this football game for the Chiefs, you know. It was horrible. Uh, I mean, there's no other way to put it. Uh, we were just god off. And uh, this leads me to what I want to talk about, okay. Uh, you know, my dad was one of the, you know, uh, you know, one of the people who didn't even know who this guy was before this game started, okay? Uh, this guy, he's a rookie this year, came out of LSU, you know, uh, and he's playing with his former teammate, Joe Burrow. Uh, you know, it, it's Jamar Chase uh, on the Bengals, and, and let me tell you, okay? That was the best receiving performance I've ever seen as an NFL fan in my entire life, okay? I'm 18 years old, I've been watching the NFL for 10 years, so, uh, you know, do with this information what you will, but but that was the greatest performance I've ever seen from a wide receiver in my entire life, okay? Three touchdowns, uh, you know, a little under 300 yards, 11 receptions, I mean, the stats, they speak for themselves. I mean, I mean, it's insane. It was crazy how successful he was against this Chiefs secondary. I mean, at some point, I just feel like we gotta put someone else on him. You know, uh, we had Shartavius Ward on him all game, and he wasn't doing anything, okay? So, but let's try to put Rashad Fenton in there. You know, let's try to put DeAndre Baker in there. Let's let's put someone else uh, to try to stop this guy. Because every time I saw Joe Burrow throw that football up in the air, 
I, I was just shaking my head, you know? I was like, this is gonna be a catch. If it's not a catch, it's gonna be a pass interference penalty, you know? That's exactly how I felt every time Joe Burrow threw that football in the air. You know, it's because the secondary didn't know what to do with number one. They did not know what to do with Jamar Chase. Uh, you know, I respect the guy. I respect Jar. You know, after that performance, I respect him a lot. And let me tell you something. If Jamar Chase does not win Offensive Rookie of the Year, uh, you know, that's highway robbery right there. You know, he deserves it. He absolutely deserves it. Okay? This guy is going to be a force in the NFL over the past uh, you know, few years, you know, maybe even a decade. I mean, this guy is looking phenomenal. You know, when you got Joe Burrow, that chemistry right there on that offense, I mean, it is, it is unmatched. It's just such a, 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 you know, it's something that you want on your offense, you know, a, a Patrick Mahomes, Tyree Kill type, type of connection. Um, and I feel like the Bengals, they, they really do. They have the strongest connection out of any uh, quarterback wide receiver duo in the NFL. And, and it's really showing, you know. Joe Burrow, he has trust in Jamar Chase, you know. He throws that football up. And there is no doubt in Joe Burrow's mind that it's going to land in the arms of Jamar Chase. That is exactly what any NFL fan wants for their franchise. And that's what the Bengals have. So, you know, I, I want to give them credit. You know, I want to give them props uh, for having that and for, you know, really giving that, uh, you know, to take advantage of the fact that they have that, you know, playing to their strengths. Joe Burrow, I mean, he's just sitting there saying, all right, hike. I mean, uh, you know, that's exactly what he's doing and it's working. So uh, it's crazy to see, you know, and, and I really do respect that offense for being able to do that. Um, it's just mind boggling to me. It, it's crazy. So as much as I want to say, ah, oh, you know, uh, the game, it wasn't very well officiated. The Chiefs, oh, you know what, we could have won if, you, if, the, if the refs were making the right calls. As easy as it would be to say that, you got to give this Bengals team credit. I mean, you just have to. They're a good football team. And they're definitely a team that I'm going to be watching for in the playoffs. So thank, uh, you know, thank you guys for watching, okay? I'll see you guys in the next episode of Chiefs Chat. Peace out.